All right, everybody. My next guest, she's new to me, but she's not new to the Flat Earth community. And I think I'm going to agree with Mr. One the One, who's pronouncing Dawn the new queen of Flat Earth. Karen B., your reign is over. You've tyrannized the Flat Earth community long enough, Karen, with your despotic... Uh, uh, <laughs> Scarface like Tony Montana control over the flat earth community. You've suppressed the information long enough. You continuously put down the Tatarians. You put down the melted brick building people. God forbid, don't even let me talk about the mud flood stuff. You barely let Brian Stavely talk about the Mandela effect. I heard you kicked him out of your attic for it. It's time for a new queen. And we here at the Z show are installing Dawn, who's with me? Hurrah, hurrah. All right, everybody. <laughs> Angela says, long live the new, the new queen. <laughs> oh. You know, some people try to tell me I've lost my mind, but the reality is I've always been like this. I didn't lose anything. <laughs> All right, guys, like I said, you're going to stick around for this one. Just trust me on this one. All right, so let me welcome her to the show. I saw her last night. I have to say, Dawn, uh, I just met you recently by seeing you last night. So, But I uh, look, Dawn, you'll probably agree with me. I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But when flat earthers encounter each other, you just know. Two sentences, a paragraph, you go, okay, you're a flat earther. It's a spidey sense. We just pick up on it. and. Uh, you know, we know each other when we seize each other. So you appear to be legit. I'm looking forward to this conversation. She was on Jaren last night, was debating uh, basically two globies. One, fight the flat earth and some other douchebag. I mean, some other wonderful guy who's totally intelligent. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, she did a great job. And she did get a little hot under the collar, uh, but she held it together. But I could see. I can see she wanted to jump through the screen and basically like choke slam that little fucking nitwit like i got it I, I know i know where you're coming from don we all wanted to i always want to but that's his thing don did you notice and i've seen him do it before he puts a weird strobe light on like Doran, like the i don't know if you noticed it like he, he i've seen him do it multiple times he does little weird like psychological maneuvers that whoever's training his fucking ass is teaching anyway i want to bring her up see i build anticipation with my audience this is what i do but Without any further ado, let's give her a warm Z Show welcome. Dawn 189. Nice to meet you, lovely lady. Hi. Thank you for that intro. Um, I, I'm not dressed for it, obviously, but I, I don't really care, honestly. Um, so, um, yeah, the debate was a little painful. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've seen Craig's work and I've seen uh, Ozian. He's trying to call himself MC Tune. Uh, these are people that just for the last few years, right, they have been such trolls for people within the flat earth community. And uh, and they have repeatedly gotten uh, data that would um, completely refute, it completely debunks the globe earth model. And right. But me so they much. still doggedly. That's why I call them a disinge disingenuous it is. Dawn, is because when presented with this information to continue to give this dishonest false narratives that they stick on over and over with now, but here's the thing oh. I've seen this is it's, it's either a personality type that then somehow gets supported either in a organized way or just by their donations. Cause I'd imagine at this point, Don, he probably has a very good livelihood from his endeavor here on YouTube. I, I have no doubt about it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So Jan was saying that dad, like on their, for the subscribers, they got, uh, a few thousand subscribers and, and Jaren has less than a thousand. And to me, that's ridiculous. And uh, these are people that go even to the Anarchapocos and, uh, and they're complete trolls. And this is what I mean. And they try to report other flat earthers pages. They are, you know, with a negative comments, they're getting people from their channels to do the same thing. And for the most part, people from the flat earth community, because uh, we're not as uh, ridiculous <laughs> for the most part, there are some ridiculous ones. I'm not going to lie, but we're not, uh, we're not doing that. To, to, to these people, right? Trying to uh, deplatform them, demonetize them or, or things like that. We're trying to get them on our shows and they're exploiting those opportunities. And so 
Um, right. Because you know, we're, people- we're not psychotic, Dawn. We're not psychotic. <laughs> um, I just want to point out to my audience, like Thunder Chicken, who's probably – guys, you see how she's got the shoulder thing going? Like she's dripping that like shirt down. she got the right shoulder yeah, out. With, like, shirt. Sorry. Cause I no, no, no. You don't. Don't <laughs> see. I, I shouldn't have said anything. See, I <laughs> fucked it all up. I, this is what I do. I always step on – whatever. I, this is just what I do. Um, where was I? Now, here's the thing, Dawn. We're not psychotic. Well, yeah. We're not psychotic like these people. They behave they behave in completely antisocial, unimaginable ways. You know, like you said, we're fine with everybody. In my mind, okay, you want to defend the globe, you have the right to do it. Have your little channel, do whatever you want to do. But other exactly. people don't have that mindset. They want to shut our voices down. They want us to be censored, shadow banned, and deplatformed in so many ways. What are you afraid of, everybody? It's just infra- if we're just stupid, idiot flat earthers who believe in an archaic, disproven conception of a flat okay. earth, which is also then why that? What's the fuss? Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, even with that, like it frustrates me that they say lies like that as well. So, um, I think his name is Eudoxus, or uh, for me, it would be Eudoxu, how you would pronounce it. But he was uh, he was the original ast- 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 astronomer mathematician um, that came up with the first cosmic whatever you want to call it, um, kind of, uh, it was a geocentric model of the earth and people like Aristotle and Socrates, if these friggin' people even existed, right? Like th- this is all unproven. It's, right. uh, and, and so, uh, he, uh, he inspired those likes, right? So even with Copernicus and I don't, I don't necessarily know if he existed and, 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 it, and so there, there are so many people throughout histories, so many peoples throughout history that, um, that were discussing and sharing the geocentric model. And uh, in even the times when the, the pseudoscience was being pushed during Copernicus' alleged time, during Kepler's alleged time, uh, even murdering Tycho Brahe allegedly, and uh, and even recent stuff, right? Like they have repeatedly been debunked even during their time. And people keep on saying that it's an archaic model and that's never been taught before. And even in the early 1900s, the flat earth model was still absolutely being taught even in the US. Right, and even here's the thing, Black- Dawn. Here's, Dawn, here's the thing. The new thing now from the anti-flat earthers is uh, everybody always knew it was a globe. Even all these anti, that's their new rhetoric. Is it? Oh, no, not even like, you know, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, the fucking, we can keep going. Oh, they all knew it was a globe now. And it was just, it's crazy. Now, here's the thing. Going back to what you said about not even knowing if these people existed. I'm taking deep dives into history lately, the last couple of years. And I've been going deeper and deeper into history. What I'm understanding is once you get past a few generations, it becomes very foggy to the point where shit gets cuckoo. I got people telling me that before the mid 1800s, we don't know what the fuck happened. They made up 800 years. Uh, the, the ancient Romans never existed. Now, I, I don't know because I have all these different conceptions of history in my mind. I had the one that was taught to me. Right. So I hold that in the back of my mind. Okay. Here's the timeline that they taught to me. He said, okay, somewhere in the fertile crescent, in you know mesopotamia with the sumerians was like the birth of like recorded history modern culture things like that maybe it was some pre or uh, post diluvian post flood thing maybe six or seven thousand years ago it starts and then we see go from like the sumerians to like you know the chaldeans and then into like the egyptians and then eventually yeah. the babylonians the persians the greeks the romans the whole thing and then you have the dark ages And, you know, the whole, you know, basically Holy Roman Empire. (laughs) What? The scientific revolution. Oh, and then the scientific revolution. So I was just leading on again with like a... Right. And then you find that, okay, then it's first like, oh, maybe that was instituted by the church and the Jesuits. You start learning about, you know, the Royal Society of like, you know, whatever, 1666 or whatever. And you, but now I'm like, I'm like, okay. And then there's those other things where almost history can get tossed out the window. So like you said. We don't know if any of these people ever existed. We don't know anything about the Greeks. We don't know anything even about the 14 and 1500s with these so-called Copernican revolution, because that's what this whole thing, it's this Copernican revolution of heliocentrism. And that was supposed to take off this whole thing. We don't even know if that. So, okay, let's throw all that out the window. Let's just look at demonstrable reality. Let's, and that's the thing. Oh, the Greeks and the, and the, the, the Egyptian. No, no, forget all that. Let's look at reality. Let's look at what we can test. Let's look what we can observe. Exactly. Well, we can measure what we can exactly. test and what can repeat. <laughs> let's do that, everybody. Let's Why start there and let's that? not lie. <laughs> all right. Well, so, all right. So, let's back up a little bit. How did you, a former um, military uh, uh, yeah. member, how did you, uh, obviously, lovely, uh, dare I say, beautiful, um, 
woman, how did you come into this understanding that, wow, because, you know, look, the flat earth is when somebody took somebody become a flat earther. And I don't know if you call yourself by that term, but you know what I mean? We're all flat earthers. Exactly. If you think it's a level horizontal topographical plane. Yeah. How did you get here? How did you first get in? And then what was the thing that like, because I remember the moment where it all switched in my head. It took me two years of fighting through Cogdis. Yeah. And it switched in my head. Why don't you give us a little bit of your story? Um, I would say, yeah. Uh... I didn't have an easy upbringing. So I think that a lot of people that are in the truther community, so to speak. Ooh, are- daddy issues, everybody. <laughs> oh, I knew I liked you right away. Every- I saw this dawn. I said, there's something. I, honestly, and and you're French Canadian. Oh my God. <laughs> oh man. I used to, I used to live in Vermont um, years and oh, years yeah. ago, like in the late nineties. I'm probably older than you, but I lived in, oh, I lived I in Vermont. <laughs> what was that? I don't think so. Nah, I bet I guarantee you I am. So anyway, I um I lived in northern Vermont, and um, at the time you can just go over the Canadian border. You didn't need a passport. You just needed like a driver's license from a U.S. state. You didn't even need a passport. So we'd go yeah. up there because the drinking age in Montreal was eighteen, and <laughs> I, so I, I was like, way before that, <laughs> <laughs> what? I started drinking way before that, though. Oh, I could imagine. I could imagine. I can imagine you were a firecracker, Dawn. I'm just saying. So, I, um, my, me and my friends, we'd go up and we'd go into Montreal because we couldn't drink here, but we'd go there and drink. And it was always a great time. The people were wonderful. I was surprised because I was just a dumb kid. Like I said, it was the 90s. You know, there was no smartphones. The internet was barely a thing. And I remember I crossed the border and all the signs were in French. And it blew my mind. Like, I didn't even think that's how dumb I was that Quebec is French Canadian and the signs would be in French. I saw Nord, Sud, and I'm like, Sud. And then my friend's like, Sud is South, you idiot. I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, All right. So go ahead. So how did you, you had a rough upbringing. Bring us from there. So so I'm I'm only saying that because usually when you have experiences in your life that cause trauma there, you're, you're just less trusting of society and people in general, especially, especially if it's within your nuclear community, et cetera. And so, so there was that and me just questioning things in general. And then uh, my, my brother, who's incredibly smart, older than me, engineer type, skipped grades, all of that incredible stuff. But when he was a teenager, he, uh, he, he corrected a, uh, a, an advanced calculus book or whatever. Like, and he actually had to drive, we were in the Gatsby Z, like humble beginnings. And he had to drive like an hour and a half, two hours, I guess, uh, with him and another guy from where we lived just to get advanced studies because like no one not even teachers were at their level and so when he corrected this book um that really uh made me question everything because i was like what do you mean like you're 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 correcting a math book you know, for for me at that age i just thought that was really significant and so even at that point i was kind of like looking at even science differently and then i was like uh, and then when we were, we were being taught about uh i forget what it was but i when i, I think i was like 12 years old i, I wrote a book about the um the ghost ships of Shalar Bay. And for me, it was confusing as like how I can see these ships and they were making ex- excuses of how we can see it. And it was about like, oh, they're ghost ships or these mirages and stuff like that. And even at that age, it didn't make sense to me. So I actually wrote a book and I don't have it and I wish I did because uh, when we left people, like uh, they broke into the house and they stole a lot of stuff. But anyway, it is what it is, but I don't have it anymore. But even at that time I was questioning things. And then um, I, you know, at RMC, because I, I came from humble beginnings, I was with a lot of rich kids, entitled people and stuff like that. I had my own license. I had been working at a very young age and stuff like that as well. And I was with a lot of rich, entitled people. And so I was actually doing good in school because for me, I, uh, there was no other option, right? <laughs> like I could go back to my, my life and stuff like that. I know I'm rambling on, but I did really, really well. And I performed high mentally. Uh, I performed well me- mentally, physically, bilingually, and, and things like that. And I seem to always get these leadership positions. I won a lot of awards. And uh, I was the first female in the history of the uh, my, the infantry regiment that I became a part of, which is the PPCLI, the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. And not everyone liked that. And I was fine with that because I understood going into it that there would be people not liking that and that I'd be around war fighters and warriors. You know what I mean? That uh, they're on the like a little bit more on the right end of the behavioral spectrum. And so even with that being the only woman, I also dealt with things that made me, you know, question reality and, and things like that. And even, even my own right people like, and so, um, and then, and then I, and then I got asked to go to the special forces cause I was seen as an outside the box thinker. And a lot of the things I did, I was excelling at. And so, uh, and then I, uh, I realized that nine 11 was staged and planned 
And then I realized that the moon. What year is this? Up. What, what, that what year? That was 2015. I would say. So 2015, you After would say 15 is. 15 years of service. Yeah. All right. So you did 15 years of service. And prior to 2015, you said you were intelligent, but were you questioning the common narratives? Like to, for me, it was about 2010, maybe 2009, where I started to go, okay, what's nice going on that. here? You know, that's when I really started to get the wheels turning about maybe this place isn't what I think it is in a real way. I, I had some experiences when I was a child, like supernatural type of things. So I was always kind of in touch with that, but never could imagine that the deception of this realm would be what it is. No, so I started no. to get, so, so, you, so it was 2015, you started to, to get in and you said it was 9-11 was the thing that kind of triggered you into this. I was just, uh, I, that, and um, excuse me, uh, a few other things, but I, I would say that um, I was so busy that it's not even something that was in my, uh, my realm of, uh, like, I, I wasn't like for, for that, for those 15 years, like I wasn't, I was just busy. And I think that's a way they do it as well. When you're high functioning, uh, they, they tend to like take you and then you tend to get more work. So even when I was in the military, for example, I was always doing multiple different jobs. And so I was always busy. I'd be sleeping in my office. Sometimes there was even a, that's what they do. Day. Here's the thing, Dawn, that's the trick of the exactly. system. <laughs> they take the intelligent people. That's why you see, you know, like doctors, these high level people, physicians are the most indoctrinated. They're the most controlled because their intelligence gets hijacked, right? They get to buy into the system. They define their identity through a system defined construct and they're a doctor. Now they're bought into the whole thing. And like you said, these beautiful minds, all these minds of these men and women all around the world get co-opted and basically entrained onto the system. And like you said, it's like, you know, I, I don't want to just, you know, but I was in healthcare, you know, uh, for a number of years. And it was the same thing. I was work, 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 busy, busy, busy. I didn't have time to think about it. It was only when I was able to step back for certain circumstances in my life and actually have some time to start to question things. And then the dominoes fell. Okay. So you're, you're doing your thing. You're, you're into your, you know, you're, you're, you're achieving, you're, you're just doing what you thought was right. You were being moral. You were you were serving your country or your province. Yeah. I don't know how it works with uh, Quebec, but okay. So you're in it, and you start to question 9/11. God, so where does it go from there? Continue. Um, yeah, that hit me really hard, and then I became an alcoholic, and uh, I wanted to end my life and all that stuff. And I went through a really heavy period for a couple of years, and I got myself out of it. But uh, it's because uh, I, I I've deployed as well. And uh, with the Patricias, with my, with my, tour, like, I mean, we, we lost people, but I lost people that I loved. And so even as close as someone that I carried the metal of the metal in the bray in the Chinook during the ramp ceremony, cause I was deployed as well. And, and I, and I was like literally reading what happened to him and stuff like that. And uh, anyway, and so uh, that was like uh, around Christmas time. Right. And so like, uh, like uh, doing that was on the, uh, the 25th of December and Anyways, and so, uh, and I lost a lot of other people that I cared about, even on that tour, other tours, uh, people that, um, that that I've lost because of addiction or suicide or uh, so many other trauma. things. Right? So there's so a lot of trauma. trauma. That's and another that's thing. Yeah. That's so, another uh, thing about, about trauma because they create this world where people are traumatized consistently, right? Exactly. And we no longer have the communities, the families, the support system that I think a natural uh, con a natural sort of state of uh, humanity would have where we would have a traumatic situation, but there was ways that we dealt with it. Now everybody's so individualized. We live in a society as opposed to a community, everything's psychology. There's no spiritual en energy, yep. uh, no spiritual ideas. People go through trauma and they're, they're fucked up for a while and people have a lot of unresolved trauma. All yep. right. So it brought you into alcohol. It brought you in a spiral where you were, Maybe being a little bit self-destructive. Okay, yeah. continue. <laughs> and um, and then I realized that um, all of that stuff brought me to. Uh, I mean, I I never was an atheist. I always believed that there was some kind of a, a of a of a creator. I, I like um a, a spiritual. I was always spiritual, but I would say that looking at the stuff that I was looking at more intimately, especially astronomy and astrology, and looking at the zodiacal belt. And then looking at the sun's path through it and, and how perfect that was and how this is a how this is a divine clock and how this is uh, something that someone with a higher level consciousness would create. Because even in this in this realm, we do better when we access our higher levels of consciousness. And that's why, like, that's why we're always stuck, like you're saying, and always 
stuck in fear or aggression is because these are lower level emotions and uh, they keep us distracted and not thinking our in our inner rational in a rational way, accessing our executive functioning, et cetera, because we're in flight or flight, fawn or freeze, if you want to go uh, that um, that far down that hole. But but even within first world societies, right, um, we've been groomed to uh, to trust our uh, our society, like the uh, the professionals, the people with the coats, the people with the uh, the uniforms, and uh, in other countries, it's not so black and white, right? <laughs> I've traveled a lot. I've been all over the world. Uh, even even and on my own, I've actually gone through a lot of sketchy experiences as well that I can talk about, but maybe not for this channel. Um, because life is dangerous. Oh, right? you'd be and surprised. You'd be surprised about the things we talk about on this channel, Don. You'd be really surprised. <laughs> you'd be. It, I'm not your typical flat earth channel. Like we can talk. Like I, I'll have people on here in moments where I'll talk about like you know what is quote unquote gravity? Is it electrostatics? Is the fucking Earth actually traveling upwards at a consistent rate? Like. Uh, it, we'll go to there, you know, we'll do all kinds of things. We'll talk about perspective. We'll talk about Euclidean versus non-Euclidean geometry. And sometimes we'll talk about cunnilingus. So we, we literally do the whole spectrum of things. So feel free to just go wherever your, your, your mind and your consciousness takes you, Dawn. It's okay. Um, go ahead, continue. Don't mind me. I do that. Yeah, sometimes. no, not a problem. So I was going to say that like um, in first world countries, we have a lot more people that are entitled and social justice warriors and victims. And that's part of the narrative as well in order to have this, this societal collapse from within and i and i've been saying that this is even that stuff that happened in uh like even pre-world war one right where the, the, everyone thinks this trans movement for example is something that is new and it's not and it never was right there were clinics that were popping up in germany and there was more perversion within society and, and uh, attacks against families etc and uh and then this is something that was being pushed right so the remainder of europe as you likely know was communist socialist and the the majority of the uh the crimes against jewish people lower class people and people of color and Christians as well, by the way. So it wasn't just Jewish people that were, that were, uh, you know, awfully, obviously, you know, um, murdered. Uh, you know, you can't really go around that, but these were all, you know, mostly in Poland, Ukraine and Russia in socialist communist countries. And so even with Adolf Hitler, like I, uh, like I think that he was not Christian at all. I think that he is someone that was used as a, as a puppet uh, to push psyops or propaganda, and uh, and he was saying things that people kind of could uh, could kind of like, I don't know, um, use to uh, to push the far right ecclesiastic kind of rulership, which always seems to happen. You know, like the pendulum swing when you go too far extreme left, it kind of like always swings too far right, and people think right. that you know. And so the Christians, like, there's even accounts of him saying that he wasn't Christian, and he did a lot of awful things. You know, allegedly that I can't prove, but there's strong evidence to suggest. And even working in and around uh, Eva von Braun, so like again, part of the psyops or being groomed, and so uh, and and then he was also getting people, his leaders, to be part of churches, and and not religious people at all, but to get people to do confessions, and they were they were spies essentially, and they were reporting all of this stuff back to him, and he's the one that also I, like I can go on a list about this stuff, but people don't understand history and how that the, the the response that we're seeing now with this trans movement and uh and then the maga movement right so that flag not the not the lgb flag but the one that has like the map thing on it like the the minor purse minor attracted purse friggin gross friggin flag that flag and the maga hats are are ways to uh it, it's the same thing as a as a swastika the nazi flag in in world war 2 it's to elicit emotional responses in people and this is a like another way of pushing communism here right so what i, I could know, here, here's I have a similar understanding in it to me when you see these type of let's say controversial issues or things like that they seem to be orchestrated and being played by you know the same entity playing both sides yeah. called controlled opposition a Hegelian dialectic you know there's a lot of ways to, to do it but it seems like these things are, are made for division you can even look at the wars when you really examine the wars even the American Civil War World War one World War two etc cetera, etc cetera, you find that it's basically the same entities they're just playing both sides against each other. Classic divide and conquer. So that way, whoever the hidden hand is running this thing gets us fighting amongst each other, pointing fingers, you, me, me, you. And then they basically continue their domination and, and tyranny. I even see it in America with like, say the black lives matter, you know, versus the uh, back, the blue thing. So th this idea of, of uh, division orchestrated uh, and uh, you know, uh, propagandized and conditioned, engineered Absolutely. seems to be part of what they do you know if you look into their you know their their writings from their you know their uh, occult like mystery school bullshit and everything they're into this is just seems to be the way they do things 
All right, so you're seeing all these things from like a high level thing, but I want to I want to take it back because I want I'm trying to bring bring you into how you got in the flat Earth because you and I can go everywhere in this thing. Oh yeah, I want to I, I want to get flat Earthy with you. So let's <laughs> let's kind of let's kind of go back. So you start to kind of wake up to all this shit. Like you said in 2015, it triggers. Now you're starting to pull the pieces together. Bring us onto your journey where you said, oh, where the fucking flat Earth topic came up. Bring us to that moment. Um, yeah, because I wasn't someone that was like, uh, I wasn't into YouTube or watching TVs or anything like, or TV or anything like that. I've always some, been someone that reads a lot of books more. And that's where I like to get my, 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 my information from it. But, uh, but this time I would say it was like maybe 2019. Um, I, uh, I was shared a link by someone from in the special forces and he didn't even say anything about it. He just gave me the link. It's because we were giving information back and forth about other things because after I got out of the military, um, like I, I, I was, I am incorporated. And so I was doing higher level contracts with the higher levels of government internationally. So still with the five eyes community. So I, I was JTF too, not Marine. So I'm Canadian. And so I just want to clarify that with people. Got and you. I yeah. As soon as you said you're Canadian, <laughs> I said, Oh, she, 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 that, then it kind of triggered in my mind. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you're, so now you're out, you're doing contracts with these things. So that's and why. So this is what I'm saying. So with this, I was, I was, I was the one that was the, uh, first I was a role player because it was special forces people and people like covert law enforcement or people with like multiple years and homicide detective units and stuff like that, that were hired for specific courses to train our higher levels of government that respond to natural and man-made disasters internationally. So that was 2016 period, because as soon as I got out, I woke up and then the people within my community realized I got out and even like my, my sergeant major and stuff like that, that I worked with. Um, they, uh, they liked working with me. So as soon as I got out, they're like, come here, like you're working with us. And, and so like, I was already like right back into, but in a higher level stuff than I was in before even. And so like even DART, for example, and uh disaster, uh, anyway, search and rescue staff and, and uh, global affairs, Canada and, and multiple other others. And so, uh, doing that work, I, uh, I then became the course coordinator and then I was starting to do the, uh, the training packages and the, and the scenarios and stuff like that. And I was doing the assessments to what was going on with natural and man-made disasters. And so doing that right away, I was like, holy fuck. It's like, sorry for swearing. Cause I'm actually doing my own, right? Like, cause usually I was getting int and stuff like that also from like people from within the organization. Right. And like from my, my chain of command and, and you know what I mean? It was like, it was like kind of like bottom, it was like top down. And, and it should be, and, and it should be more bottom up, but, and there was a bit of both. It's hard to explain, but doing the research on my own, like it started to like not make sense. And then, uh, and then it was like moon landings. I'm like, that's not fucking real. And then I was like all these other things. And then I'm looking into so many other world war two, world war one. And then I'm like, Oh my, like, yeah, it was a lot. And, uh, and then I'm like, okay, so like now, and then I was trying to tell the guys in the group, guys that are even older than me that uh, I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like 9-11 was a fucking false flag. And I'm like, so when we respond to people or when we're doing work with people, even in the, anyway, I'm not going to get that far. We need to be aware of the information we're providing internationally because, uh, and how we're responding because it could be a false flag. Right. You know I mean? So let me ask you, so up. you're saying this, you're saying this to people, how are they responding to you? Oh, they think I'm crazy. Stuff? Right. They think, and, right. They're, and blocking me and calling me a conspiracy theorist and, and a right. right winger and like a white supremacist and all these. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm, right. not, I'm giving proof. I was giving nothing but medical, scientific and government data. And so that was my point as well. I wasn't giving them YouTube videos. Um, and so a few years after that, someone gave me it because he was also someone that knew about this stuff early on. And he's like and he heard about me. And like how vocal I was about stuff, especially the Freedom Convoy and, and all the like anyways. And and like uh, we were talking and stuff like that as well. And anyway, someone someone in the community and he's like, you probably want to see this. And so that was it. So in 2019, and, somebody sends you one video and that's all it yeah. took. And then you just went you just went all in. You started investigating it. What yeah, was well, the video? Was it like a, this is standard like a Dave Weiss in 2019? There was a lot of. of uh, Lost history of of, of flat Earth. That, that right, six so hour video. E war and none. That's e war and none. Yeah. That sounds familiar. And so yeah. that it took me so long to get through because it's a six hour video. But I was someone that it was just given to me nothing like because we don't we don't add bias. So in my network on Signal and Telegram, if we're giving information, we don't want to give any bias that can like alter kind of like the uh, like your interpretation of the data. And so it was just a link provided, and uh, with nothing given not even letting me know if he was a flat earther or not. Right. So, and I respect that stuff. I like that. That's how I like to work. And, uh, and so I would stop it at po po points just to verify things. And that's what made it take like 10 years almost. I'm just exaggerating now, but I wanted to verify. Yeah, I know what you mean. Right. So I would be stopping and pausing and then 
looking into books or buying books or going in the archives online and uh, all of that stuff and seeing that things were getting more censored. So then I got a VPN and then I was connecting from different countries because Canada was getting more censored. And then I had to go on the way back machine in order to like access data that was getting like more censored. And so, and then I was like, you know what, they're really good at this. <laughs> and, all right. Uh, so let me, let me ask you. So let me ask you. Um, so you start getting into it right now. The fact that you're now online, like on Jaronism, debating Globies shows probably something about your personality, which is probably like mine. Um, oh, my audience wanted to know, what's your sign? People were asking in chat, what's your astrological sign? I'm a, I'm a Capricorn. You're Capricorn. Okay. Because um, pe people are like guessing and stuff. I'm a so, Gemini um, moon and Sagittarius rising. Okay. Um all For right, sure. so so you so you get into it, right? And you, you go all in. Now, um, yeah. I want to ask you a few things about Canada because, uh, like you said, you're in Canada, so you started to create these virtual private networks, and you started to have to do all this thing. Yeah. What were you worried about? Were you worried about the authorities uh, spying on you? What <laughs> made you go through all these digital efforts to basically obscure your identity? It wasn't too obscure. It was to gain access to information that was being obscured. Oh, from me. wow. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Wow. All right. So I see. For me, I'm, I'm laser focused. And, and, and if I want to get it. And so I was getting things like, uh, like the, like even during the, 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 the COVID plan pandemic, I was, I was saying before that, you know what I mean? Not, not to, uh, to fall for it. And so, so within my community, even within Ottawa, like people can search this online. Her name is Helen Gruce. She's uh, someone that was also, she's, she was Ottawa, she still is, but she's Ottawa Police Services with over 20 years service. And uh, she's someone that was also working with me and that I hired like pre-2020, like from 2016 to 2019, we were working on these higher level contracts where I was training Global Affairs Canada. So when I told the director of Global Affairs that it's not a globe, she, you know what I mean? It's, you know, so that relationship uh, got you know, of course. Here's okay. the thing, Dawn. Here's what I understand, okay, about embracing. Look, when you embrace an understanding of this world that is so countercultural, all right, that is so anti consensus, it becomes increasingly more difficult to walk the line or straddle the fence. Yeah. And then the more you embrace truth, the more you're naturally going to be pretty much rejected from normie society. Right. It's just an energetic thing. It's a vibration. Their programming is going to automatically reject you, no matter how good you of a relationship you thought you had with the people, whether it's even spouses, they will just yeah. reject you. You'd be gone. Emily, oh, hundred percent. And so Helen Gruce, um, just, just, just to give some perspective on this, uh, because she's in the media right now, like she's in the courts still fighting because we, in, in our network, like during the pandemic, for example, we were sharing like the, uh, like the ver like the, um, the vaccine adverse events that were being reported from Pfizer alone. Right. And only three to 5% of right. the adverse events were being events were being reported, you know, as, as, as you know, because of uh, financial means, uh, gains and, and, and ego and stuff like that. And so we were sharing that, but she was actually on the ground because she was with a, with a sexual assault, child abuse, that unit for over seven years, a kilometer from my house. And, and so I, I got so much I can tell you, but <laughs> she, uh, she was, uh, her phone was tapped and stuff like that. Mine, mine was most likely because she was saying it's it, it, like not her, but indirectly through other people that I knew from Ottawa police services, the people that do the higher level stuff. And we were sharing this information. And so by her giving this to her chain of com command, her supervisors, her supervisor is literally charging her because of like doing her job. So during the rollout of the vaccines, there were multiple uh, infants that uh, ended up dying suddenly. And that was something that was very new. I, I, I can I can stop talking about this if you want. No, you're fine. Here's the okay. thing. Um, here, here's the thing. Um, from my recollection, Canada was one of the worst countries yep. in terms of the tyrannical, uh, yeah. let's say, maneuvers that they were pulling during this whole thing. One of the worst, if not the worst. Australia seemed pretty bad yeah. and maybe a few European, but Canada might have been the worst. I imagine for you, it was probably something akin to a nightmare. Look, I'm Don. I still have trauma that I'm resolving from that whole the whole 2020, 2021, 2022 yeah, stuff. Stuff that look, I wouldn't change anything because I believe things happen for a reason, and difficulties that we go through actually refine us and make us who we are. Agreed. But the reality is, the course of action taken by the so-called authority figures and the powers that shouldn't be during that whole thing 
was beyond the pale across the line. And for me, is there's a point in no return. Yep. So I imagine for you in Canada, it was even worse. And when you say that they might've been bugging your phone and stuff like that, based on who you were, the position you had in the military, and then your life afterwards with these, you know, corporations and things that you were working with and the level, you know, where you were, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if you had some level of heat on you um, that you were going through. Let me ask you about Why what this is going. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you when this is all going on, what's your personal life? Like, did you have a support system in your life? Cause I imagine your family wasn't supportive. Most people's families <laughs> were not supporting them through this endeavor. I don't want to project onto you, but uh, can you bring yeah. us into that a little bit? Yeah. And so um, during all of this, uh, like, I, like I'm in this area, like I'm in another province now for work. I'm just outside of Ottawa. All of my family's in Quebec or in BC. And so during this, so so Helen and other people I can't name yet. Like I even had a friend, like she has over 20 years as an infantry, sorry, as an, as, a, as an army officer. And she was kicked out of the military while pregnant. I'm not even lying. And then she even divorced her husband because even he was trying to pressure her to get the vaccine. And she's like, this is my first child. It's going to be a high risk. And so we were saying this and she was investigating deaths of multiple children during a very short period of time. And this never happened in seven years. And even with her supervisor. And we were saying like, these are things that need to be investigated. Right. That's what we were saying. That's what was was being said. And uh, and we were uh, getting intimidated. And so it was like law enforcement showing up to people's houses, like full up SUVs with like the like the the, the whatever you want to call it, the lights going. And uh, I had you know, I had people try to break into my home and circled my block for hours. Like there's boot prints on my back step. Uh, like There's so many things right. like, uh, that happen. So you're basically me. being harassed. And no one around. And then I had that. family members that were hospitalized in another province and uh, I wasn't even able to see them. And I didn't know right. if I'd ever see them again, you know, uh, you know, multiple and, uh, and, and knowing people that, uh, you know, yeah. And trying to give this information to them and people like not even wanting to listen to it. And I wasn't giving anything other than medical scientific and government data. And neither was Helen and, and all these other people. And so we were isolated. We were outcast. We were vilified. We were in lockdown. I couldn't go to restaurants or gyms or see my family or even travel for work. So I literally, by me not getting vaccinated, it ruined my life. And I, I, you know what I mean? I like all my contracts were canceled. I wasn't working with global affairs anymore. I was doing work with executive protection, like even for the Bank of Canada, people's and, uh, and, and for Justin Trudeau, like our prime minister and like the head of the Raptors, Toronto Raptors and, and these things. But in like the, like people now, now that I sp spoke out about like Ukraine and Russia, what's going on there. And I've lost people there too. Like I, like I, like a guy, literally an ex Patricia, <laughs> you know, not legal technically but like went over because he heard of what happened and, and he didn't know it was a lie and i was telling these guys we're going over my like this fucking lie and people are dying that i know and we're coming up with gofundmes and everyone in canada has no idea what's going on in the world they have no idea and i'm talking to guys even like like a high level government you know and in, in like the space freaking astronauts people that i and, and and now their accounts are taken over by the canadian space agency so i can't even communicate with people anymore like I, I've just been so isolated and outcast and even like, like I've been all over Canada. So through this, I've gone to the Yukon and back like East and West coast and stuff like that to be a truther and like make connections and talk to people in person because of the, the phone taps and stuff like that. And, and I've literally just been like nonstop, basically like, uh, I've like, even like I've, I've, I haven't dated in years. I haven't had a sex life in years. I haven't had friends in, you know, it's just been so much. And, and it's just, uh, because Canada is falling. And I'm literally one of the only ones that knows what's going on. And like, I'm just trying, you know, and, and it's a fucking dumpster fire. And I literally have whiteboards and I and literally where I name the countries when it's going to happen. And, and I, and I, and I share the false flags. I know I'm like rant, ranting, but it's overwhelming when you're seeing even today, I have two friends, um, a niece, 23 years old, died, sorry, 30, 32 years old, uh, died from some kind of like a random, um, pituitary, uh, you know, uh, a rare disease. So here's the thing, Dawn. Here's the thing. I've had, you know, <laughs> multiple instances in my life, multiple, where I've seen people have um, weird medical consequences out of nowhere the last couple of years. That's true. When yeah. I say when I say more than 10, I'm watching people have all these things, but yet people are still indoctrinated. People don't want to believe it. It's crazy. 
Yeah, because right, so I, I on the front lines, like I, there's doctors and nurses. We were talking, we were having Zoom meetings and they were saying that they, they were treating it like the flu originally. And then it was literally when the vaccine rolled out. That is literally when people are saying, oh, now it's actually now we're overloaded. And 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 and, and then we were seeing the spikes and excessive deaths and and even going to uh, to like elderly uh, long term care nursing homes. And and and, and anyway, people need to. So, to let me so, so, you're going, so you're going through all this, right? I'm sure now things have like settled down a little bit, but you never know when they're going to tip off again. So it, yeah. it, it's crazy. Let me ask you, did you ever think about moving? I'm not encouraging you to do so. I'm just asking the question. Yeah. And so uh, I did move. Um, and so I, uh, as soon as they, so a heritage site behind my house was never supposed to be touched and magically around freedom con anyway, magic uh, weird timings. Uh, it got taken over. By by people who were literally har harassed anyway, bothering me for 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 a while. But like as soon as they shredded the trees, I uh, I put the like my house on the market, and uh, within two weeks there was a huge windstorm that would have never impacted my house if the trees weren't shredded, and so like my house got damaged, and so I had to take it off the market, and it took seven months of uh, of trying to get the, the damage fixed and stuff like that to get it fixed and uh, put it back on the market, and uh, it took over a hundred views because of issues with people behind my house with the heritage site being taken over and stuff like that. And I was finally able to sell and, um, and, and it's been almost a year. I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a log cabin in the woods, like the fuck away from the city. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. That's really good. Um, all right. So let me bring it back. So it's cause it's kind of the same thing where um, I also noticed that when the flat earth started to get real big, was right around 2019 and 2020 when this whole thing popped up. I'm not saying it's just flat earth. Oh, good. But I thought it was 2015. I thought I was way behind the curve. What? With what? Um, With flat earth. So flat earth popped in 2015. That's when it like came out on YouTube. And that's when the earliest quote unquote flat earthers got on board. But 2019, I think it started really gaining steam like in a real way because that's when YouTube cracked down on it. That's when like, you know, the, people were getting deplatformed. People stopped uh, basically being promoted in the algorithms, things like that. And then my point is, then 2020 hit. Now, it could just be a coincidence that as all these people are coming into these new understandings, they set the world into complete fucking chaos and derail everybody. Uh, you know what I mean? For like three, four, five, you know, how many years people are still fucked up. Um, so I don't think that was any degree of coincidence but you never know it might have been all right so let's 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 get into the flat earth thing a little bit because we could pop off on the uh you know on the, the 2020 thing probably for the next just so you know my whole career took a change too i was in healthcare um for years okay and um similar story to me when 2020 hit and then 2021 came uh you know then they were promoting certain medical recommendations at that time I wasn't going along with it. And the hospital that I was working for, they basically just pushed me right out of the fucking door and said, don't, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Bye. So my whole life changed too. I wouldn't change anything now. It's fine. But uh, let's focus back to the flat earth thing, because I want to get into your mindset a little bit about, you know, how you see this realm. What is it? Because people always say to me, which is a logical fallacy. All right, Z, if it's not a stupid wobbling spinning ball, like orbiting a fusion gas, you know, giant sun that it somehow exists in a near perfect vacuum. Um, if it's not that, then what is it? Dumb, dumb. You know, uh, oh, the, you know, the AE map has problems. That doesn't work either. The flat earth model. So what they'll do is they're, they'll straw man us into a model, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What do you see this place as? Okay, so you see that water is level and horizontal. Oceans don't bend. Rivers don't bend. Lakes don't right. bend. Okay, so from there, almost every flat earther, every flat earther agrees on that. Every one of them agrees on that. What do you see this place? What is it to you, this yeah. this reality, this realm? How do you, how, because we might not know, but we all have a little thing. Like to me, I go, okay, I can see the North Star. I can see the land. I go, okay, I can see like, you know, the sun and the moon going around. It might not be the AE map or the Gleason's map, but that kind of makes sense to me. And the stars are going too. And what's it in your mind when you picture Earth? What, 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 how do you visualize it? Um, 
I do believe that perception is reality. Uh, and I do believe that with this avatar, like our, our mind and our central nervous system is our kind of bridging the gap between our higher level consciousness being that's possibly play, play, playing this video game or simulation uh, through this vessel. And that uh, as I'm perceiving this game of digital and cellular coding, there's um, um, analogs that are created around me. And it, I think it's based on essentially how I'm vibrating and how I'm actually kind of like um like what what I'm intaking in my environment, if that makes any sense, if I'm if I'm accessing my higher levels of consciousness or not. And I do believe that uh, it's being projected. So I believe that this is a, an electromagnetic reality being projected on a flat plane of inertia via hyperboloids and toroidal fields. And so uh, and I think that's just how this game operates again, just like as a like via the uh, the uh, the energy part. And um, I don't necessarily know if this game has to be plugged in or not. I have no idea. This could be something that's possibly self. Uh, but anyways, a cosmos or a universe, like Walter Russell says, that's experiencing itself dualistically via electricity and magnetism. And you and with that, you get light um, in motion. And uh, I'm sure you've got gotcha. that as well. So you've got the visible yeah. and visible light spectrums of the infrared on one spectrum to the uh, ultraviolet on the other. And these are, by the way, they have uh, they have distances that they can go. So there's frequency waves and uh, and, and band lengths and stuff like that. And uh, and so these are things that are also very important and that that kind of create this environment. And um, and so even with like this uh, magnetic possibility of like a magnetic mountain or something like that in the center of this uh, reality, I believe that when you look at ma what ma what, when you look at magnets, when I'm talking about the toroidal fields and hyperboloids, I'm talking about that that would be kind of like the field that contain this environment possibly when you're looking at it in a, in a video game context with uh, anyways, with that stuff. And it's also interesting that when you look at the, the visible light spectrum, green is in the center. And so, uh, and then also, as we see this earth plane, uh, we see more shades of green than any other color. And so that that's also something that kind of is interesting to me. And yeah. so also, uh, um, your heart chakra is green too, which yeah. is a representation of the micro and the macro and how exactly. basically our consciousness, it's projection. So what are we looking at there? It's hard to well, see. <laughs> it's a, there's luminaries. And so I hold do on, let me, let me zoom in. Let me zoom in on you here. Uh, all right, so go ahead, take take us through that. Yeah, and so uh, this is just to give me kind of notes. Um, oh, I'm like, what? what, what yeah, uh, when I say I'll I'm not dressed for this, I have to like make sure that this doesn't go. Anyway, um, I'll take it. Uh, trust me, uh, my audience wouldn't mind if that shirt came up a little bit. And uh, when you started talking about like you know the electromagnetic reality and toroidal hyperboloids, I'm sure like 11 members of my male audience pretty much just you know basically went to completion at that point. Like I, I saw the chat like explode. They oh, went okay. nuts. Well, um, well, I mean, I mean, if not, like I can uh, attempt to uh, like, maybe like, like assist in, and expand on this and say that even within the atmos or the atmosphere, I guess you get higher up in elevation. That's where we have these temperature changes and, uh, and, and, and press pressure changes, which people try to allege is gravity, which I think. To All right, so let's go into that. Hold your thought. I don't want you to lose where, where you thought, but I've been thinking about this for days because the anti flat earthers has been hammering on this one. And I saw FTFE fucking goes at this one all the time. They claim that because of a pressure gradient that proves gravity. So they're basically just using a reification fallacy and a beg the question fallacy. So they'll say that there's pressure because of gravity, but they hit flat earthers with this all the time. They'll say, well, if you say gas expands instantaneously and in all directions with no downward bias, then why is there a pressure gradient? Yeah. So, they, so they what, do you, what, do you, what do you, what do you, what do you say? What do you say to that? So this 9.8 meters per second squared or whatever that they're talking about, this is like, this makes no sense to me. And so this is what they're trying to attribute to the uh, the water being glued to this ball right and so that's right. why they're talking about this downward acceleration and so when i talk about radiating and, gra and, and gravitational forces or energy this is discussing electricity and magnetism and these are right. both things that are impacted by things like temperature and pressure as you know and so even as you go up higher in elevation you get it gets colder so you actually need more of an energy yield to have or a higher voltage of electricity in order to uh, that's just how it works in order to like uh whatever. I don't know how to explain this. The higher right. up you go, the more energy, more electricity flow you, you need. You can look like right? things like Boyle's law and things like that. Exactly. And, uh, and you're right. Is that the um, and magnetism is the opposite, right? It actually operates more efficiently in, in, in the colder climates and less, and less efficiently in the, in the, in the, in the hotter climates and all, possibly, right. possibly these luminaries as well. These are possibly, I don't know if it's sun luminescence and cymatics. It could be anything, right? They could be anything. Um, 
They could be yeah, sentient souls. They could be angels. They could be so many things. It's everything but what they tell us it is, basically. It's everything but a burning fusion gas ball, uh, billions of, of uh, tr trillions of miles away in multiple light years. It's and everything gas, but like, that. Like, and gas doesn't like right. try to kind of- How can like, gas, well, they'll say gravity. They, ju they just keep begging the question of gravity and over, over and over again. It's a dynamic pressure system. And so even right. with that, that's what I was saying, right? Um, and so it's not just downward acceleration. So what I'm saying is gravity, they're misinterpreting it or, or, or explaining it as a downward motion because that's the only right. thing they can use to explain how we're stuck on a ball and how the water's stuck on a ball. It's bullshit because even with that, it's a weaker force than magnets, magnetism, and it's a weaker force than the friggin' the, than the wind. And so this is what I mean. It's nonsensical. And the environment as well, it's not just downward acceleration. Gravitating forces and, and radiating forces, this is based on electricity and magnetism. Electricity is a gravitational force and, and, and magnetism is a radiation, radiating force. And this is why also when they talk about the, the, like the sun being a luminary, being some kind of like a magnetic, whatever you want to call it, luminary with radiating rays, heating rays. This is it, regarding that, like the centripetal forces versus the centrifugal, like electricity as well. This healing, cooling versus heating, expanding versus retracting, integrating versus disintegrating forces that can go any way depending on the dynamic pressure systems, how they're operating. It's also based on the temperature where you're located on the earth as well. It's colder in climates than others, et cetera. And, uh, and then the, uh, and so many other things. And so uh, the way they just, the way they talk about it, it's so low level to me. That's why I get fired up, honestly, because, and then they're trying to show me a, like a fudging video of like, I know. Trampoline with like two walls and, 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 or trying to explain like my sine wave comment too. Like, I'm just like, like, like all this low level stuff. And, uh, but electricity and magnetism, like I, like, uh, it's, um, if we start talking about electrostatics as gravity, don't we then get ourselves in trouble because are we not then conjecturing a theory that may be unevidenced? Go ahead. I want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. So when I, so with Walter Russell and uh, the Universal One and other books that I've read, so this is just like I don't know if this is again, this is just by, by just my own opinion. Sorry, my brain is still a little bit melty because like after last night's debate, I did an after show for three hours, and so it was just a lot of science. I can imagine. Hold on, my my audience wants to know what are you smoking? They want to know because you're. They want to know is it is it a spliff? Sativa. Is it, it what is it? Sativa pot. Sativa. 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 Got. Do you okay? <laughs> All right, so here's my thing. So you don't, because a lot of um, French Canadian people I know, they smoke splits where they put tobacco in with the cannabis. You no, don't I do don't that, that, but you smoke sativa. Um, you're yeah, like, you, do you understand? You're like the dream girl to like 75% <laughs> of my audience, basically all the men. You, so, so, so there, I see them in chat. They can't understand when you brought up your yes, sex well, life and sex. stuff. They, they went so, wild. So, go ahead, so go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. With the, with my interpretation of uh of electricity and magnetism and magnetism with the gravitating or radiating forces that's where i think that with, with the electricity so even within this sky for example when there's lightning i consider that to be a gravitational force for example that, that we're experiencing visually by virtue of like the uh like the whatever you want to call it because of the electricity in the air whatever you want to call it being uh being interrupted and again i'm not i'm not the expert on this this is just my my opinion is electrostatics right. technically if you correlate that with you know the uh um, electricity flow within the air or the atmosphere, the environment, and uh, and manipulating it. Like I don't think that really matters. Like how you manipulate it. I mean, it does. I mean, if you, how you want you want to manipulate it to get your desired outcome, obviously, right? But I think that there's something to kind of correlating that with debunking the the current explanation of gravity as a downward accelerating force at 9.8 meters per second square, whatever they're saying. And I believe that because it's easily disproven because even if, for example, and maybe this is just wrong and you can correct me because you're very smart. But when I look at it, if I see like a, a like a hot air balloon and uh, and when you heat it, right, like it's it, it's the, uh, the, the environment within the contained uh, part of the, underneath the sack that like kind of like has to expand and heat up and it takes a little while and then it raises. And so if there was if there was some smoke underneath of that, right, there, it would there, it would be unaltered by the uh, as the as the balloon is um, elevating. And so so there's no even underneath of it, like a, any form of like a proof of any kind of like a, a downward acceleration being demonstrated uh, in any kind of like a visible uh, kind of demonstration. And uh, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? I have no idea. <laughs> I feel as though, say, like in a debate or when trying to present this out to the public. 
by presenting another theory for quote unquote gravity, we may give them like, it's like giving a dog a bone. They get something to chew on because my whole, many of my, the way I approach arguments with this is I see this, Don, I go, okay, you're going to claim globe. You're going to defend globe. The burden is on you to prove globe. That means you need to prove gravity. You need to prove convexity. I'm not making the claim. I'm not defending the claim. That's your claim. Here's my claim. I walk outside and I feel like nothing's moving and I look at the sky and I appear that it's moving. So if yep. you're going to tell me that I'm moving faster than the speed of sound and that relatively speaking, that sky is still and then on top of that, that oceans have to stick to a ball that's spinning over a thousand miles an hour at the equator. You, if you're going to make such a grandiose and outlandish claim, you better prove it. So what happens is I put the burden on them constantly, constantly, constantly. I put the burden on them. So then by then trying to claim a reason for why we see the, the, the phenomenon of gravity, I feel as though we get ourselves in trouble. That's all I'm saying. Go ahead. Flow yours. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting you. It's because like for me, it's really hard to kind of articulate these points or these theories that, I, that I'm coming up with. And I don't want to lose my train of thought. And so when you look at microwaves, for example, just like our microwave ovens, or if you want to look at radar that use microwaves, these are these are infrared. Right. And so for me, I also say that the, that electromagnetism that we're experiencing in this cosmos, this is a where it's light in motion being experienced in various densities, if you want to look at it that way. So even all of this regarding electricity and magnetisms, how we how it, how they play with each other. I do believe that that's how we kind of like uh, experience this world or visualize this world or perceive this world in various densities and, 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 and things like that, if that makes any sense based on that. And, uh, and so I, I think that looking at the visible and non-visible light spectrum and the frequencies and the waves, and, and it, like, I think that that has a lot more, um, I think, I don't know, it's, it's a, I believe this is a cosmos, a universe light in motion. And so I, and I believe that it's like, uh, like these energies or these forces that we're, that, that, like how we're experiencing this is, is electric is via electricity and magnetism is how we're, how we're experiencing this, this, uh, this light cosmos. And, um. And so, uh, like, I don't, uh, like, there was something else I wanted to discuss, but, oh, yeah, about re magnets. So for me, like, I've read the books by Walter Russell, and, and he's a genius. I'm not taking anything away. And I've looked at so many books, uh, sorry, uh, content from Ken Wheeler. And this is where mm -hmm. they're, they're looking at it from a globe Earth perspective. And so there's a lot of things, in my humble opinion, that they're not looking at, even regarding the luminaries with, like, the electromagnetism that is also, like, uh, at play with that and uh and and so many other things and so i i respect their and admire their work but I, I think that they really need to look at electricity and magnetism as separate forces weaker and stronger forces one that could be more manipulated within its environment and one that cannot be and and how they play with each other is how we're experiencing this uh, this this world and when you get beyond it that's what i mean like when you get, get get further out that's when you have like these radiation belts or whatever they want to talk about i believe these are magnetic fields that are also what's containing this, uh, if you want to look at it in that perspective regarding electricity and magnetism, containing this environment with these uh, magnetic fields. So I, so I know where you're coming from because like these people are freaking geniuses and Tesla and all these people. So I, I like I, even to say this, the nerve, I, you know, I know like who the fuck am I? But like, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there like it, it coming with love. Yes, he's well, exactly. He he, I, I have his books. I have all of his books. Don't hate me, please. I love him. <laughs> look, here's what I always say about this, because when I look at works, especially from the early 1900s, like just pre-World War I period, you know, they come out. There's so many works, but I always see a little bit of, let's say, the popular, you know, thought of the time. And a lot of the thoughts of the time were this indoctrination of, of globe and heliocentrism and things like that. And uh, so I, I don't, throw the baby out with the bathwater. My problem is somebody now in this day and age who's still sticking to the globe thing and stuff like that. That's my problem is, is no. that, you know, <laughs> I let people off the hook who, even if it was like in 1980 and they were like a great thinker, but they were, would still say things about globe. I let them off the hook. Uh, that's just kind of the way I look at it, Dawn. Um, but look, this concept of electromagnetism, electrostatics, it's increasingly fascinating. It's unbelievable. Oh. Um, yeah. And to, to me, it's quite possible that the understanding and the ability to manipulate, harness, and exploit the electromagnetic, electrostatic properties of the air 
were were well known to humanity not that long ago. Oh, yeah. And I believe that um, humanity was able to harness this energy in a way that was relatively ubiquitous all around the world. Looking at the buildings, the architecture, the structure of these buildings, they appear to be some type of um, technology built right into the architecture and the design and construction the, the of, these, of these great things. Exactly. Even these big the spires family. on these cathedrals and things like that. When you look at like the baptism, the baptismal uh, fountains uh, at the, like in these cathedrals, and the way they might have been harnessing the uh, the energy. When you look at things like cymatics and how basically energy could be expressed into physical form, and how frequency could be expressed in the physical form, it's such a rabbit hole. It goes way, way deep. But um, yeah. you know, as far as as far as saying that the reason we, we things are go down the reason that more dense things go down relative to the environment is electrostatics i understand the argument but it's one that i probably wouldn't argue in a debate it, don't i gotta tell you i got a lot of rising earthers here what do you think about rising earth i i like to ask this to flat earthers what's yeah, your thoughts gonna, on it uh, before we sorry can i ask are you familiar with because there's there's ancient talking about ancient civilizations and ancient structures, there's uh, there's magnetrons. I think that that's how you pronounce it. All over the world, huge. They're huge. And uh, and these are ones that people are finding that are that have, that, that, that people don't know what they are. And uh, for me, I think I know what they are. I think these are advanced. Uh, so I was even trying to, I, I've told this to Burn Eye. He's a Canadian scientist guy. And I was even on Andreas, Andreas Zertis like two years ago talking about this stuff. But these magnetrons are all over the world. They're huge. And I think this is also possibly something where we were accessing some, some kind of like free energy or energy where we, were, where we were utilizing these magnetrons. And so I'm not saying that they were, you know, I'm all, that's all I'm going to say with that. I haven't heard of rising earth theory yet. And so I'm, I'm interested in it. And, and oh, like, wow. You haven't heard of rising earth. Well, rising earth, you're no. then missing out on a very interesting part of the flat earth community. You need to get acquainted with them. Okay. You need to, you need to get acquainted with them. Is there a channel uh, or a recommendation? To start? Yeah. Beyond the imaginary curve. That's the only one you need to go to because they're all there, Don. And they come here. So the idea is that what's what's called gravity is because the Earth is rising. That's their, um, that's what they're positing. That's what they're uh, postulating. So anyway, the, their their whole claim is that what is being defined as gravity is due to a consistently rising Earth. We don't need to get into the whole thing, but you got to check it out, Dawn. You're gonna. It's a whole segment of the flat Earth community, and they're fucking pissed because everybody just. Hand waves dismiss their arguments and tells them they're fucking idiots. Like my chat is going to tell me I'm an idiot just because I brought it up. Why? I'm going to look at it. I'm legitimately going to yeah. take a look at it. Because, because everybody has a propensity, even the most woke among or awake amongst us, to go back to dogma, orthodoxy, and tradition. And I think even as a flat earth community, we have an issue with building yeah. up dogma to me okay like um the biblical flat earthers great understandings in the bible to me the biblical cosmology is strong but a lot of the biblical flat earthers are very dogmatic in their understanding and to me that's just another example of orthodoxy things like that when it comes to it so well i just wanted to say because like uh, i see i see stinky cash's uh the, uh, the symbol on the uh, on the screen, and so I, I actually do like using that as a as a model for how I explain this divine clock. And so I was just going to just discuss like my model because it's very much connected to that. But um, when we look at the seven chakras, I kind of did my own again. This is my own interpretation of reality. I'm not saying that this is, re you know, like like official. And so I've connected like the seven chakras with the seven luminaries, with the seven elements, with the twelve zodiac signs, and so many other things. And, uh, and and so using the seven original luminaries, not the nine planets that people are like uh, like think that there exists or whatever, or the eight now, I don't even know, but I go off of the seven original luminaries. And so, and and then how I break it down, I'll also talk about the sun's path through the uh, the luminaries and the zodiacal clock. But when I go down the list, I'm gonna start at the top, what I think to be the top, um, with the seventh uh, chakra, which is the crown chakra, as you know, uh, because I think this is all connected, right? And uh, the day that we correlated with it, I think, is Sunday or Dimanche en français. 
And uh, I think that the uh, the zodiacal sign that's correlated with it is Leo. And uh, and then the sun rules over Leo. And uh, the element correlated with it is purple and uh, and also gold. Or, sorry, purple or violet is what I, I like to call it. So I'll get to that. And, uh, and the element being gold as well. And so even with that, um, I could discuss how... Um, how even throughout history, there's uh, no. I'll get into that when I talk about the sun's path. Um, the second row down, you've got the sixth chakra or the third eye chakra. The day of the week that's correlated with it is Monday or lundi en français, lundi in French. The zodi zodiacal sign correlated with it is Cancer, in my humble opinion, which uh, which the moon rules over, and uh, the element correlated with it is silver. And the color being indigo for the uh, for the, the the visible light spectrum correlation. Again, so uh, and then you go down the list further. You've got the fifth chakra, which is the throat chakra. The day of the week associated with it is Wednesday or Woden's Day or Mercredi in French. And then you've got now you've got two zodi zodiacal signs that are correlated with that uh, with that element, or sorry, that luminary. The luminary being Mercury, and uh, the element being Mercury. And then the color correlated with it being blue. And so Virgo and Gemini are the two zodiacal signs that are correlated with Mercury. And uh, and then also the, the color blue, and I'll get to that. And so Virgo being a, a negative, cooling, feminine, uh, gravitational sign, in my humble opinion. Gemini being the positive, masculine, radiating sign. And, uh, and then Mercury being out of the only seven original luminaries, it's the only one that's seen as androgynous or a sun and a moon combination. And so there's a lot of figures throughout history as well that are seen as uh, um, hermaphroditic and also like blue uh, figures throughout history as well. I believe that's correlated with the, uh, the visible light spectrum and the interpretations and the connections with the, uh, the luminaries and, uh, and other things. And so keep on going down the list. We've got the, the, the fourth chakra, which is the heart chakra, which you mentioned. The day of the week associated with it is Friday or Vendredi in French. And then the two zodiacal signs that are correlated with it is Libra and Taurus. Libra being positive uh, or masculine, uh, Taurus being negative or feminine. The element correlated with it being copper, the planet being, or luminary being Venus, the, uh, and the color correlated with it being green. And it just so happens to be at the, at the center point, not only of the, the chakras and the, and the color spectrum, and then even uh, musical tones and, and things like that. But it's also, again, on this flat plane of inertia, we see more shades of green. Dawn, what is this? Oh, I was just going to discuss like the sun's travel path and making a sine wave and how it's very similar to uh, some diagrams that are put in place by Walter Russell regarding gravitation and, and radiation and, and, and those forces, which, uh, which also like does the, the, the sine wave in his diagram. And so this is the sun's travel path, okay? And so, for example, like an, a Ferris wheel, when you map it out like, uh, in, a, in a graph, you have like amplitude in one uh, axis, and then you have uh, degrees or time in the, uh, in the other axis. And it also uh, obviously is uh, amplitude being dependent on the size, right? Like a Ferris, Ferris wheel, the size of the, of, the, of the ring also matters. But when you plot it out, it, it forms a sine wave. I hope I'm making sense, because again, I'm not an expert in this. I was an infantry officer. Um, and anyways, and so when you look at this sine wave, you have here, if you could see my, my mouse over this on the, on the left-hand side of the, uh, the graph, that is uh, considered to be the, uh, the start of the spring equinox. On the, 20, the 20th of March of every single year, uh, we have uh, the spring equinox where we have equal amount of day and night. And I could show another graph, right? But it, sh it shows that this is where we start, where the, the sun starts. It's at the uh, equatorial line, but it's starting its path from there. Then it's starting into the Tropic of Cancer where we get our summer months right so we're right now we're in spring every single year the sun uh enters that um into aries on the 20th of march and then we have longer days and shorter nights as we start um entering into the the summer seasons so going from aries to taurus to gemini and then we have our summer solstice when the sun is at its highest point in the sky on the 21st of june of every single year we're in the northern hemisphere correction is where we have our our um our summers and where the, the sun is uh, traveling on the, the, the ring that, that the Tropic of Cancer, that, that the one that's closest to the, uh, the North Pole, so to speak. And so uh, it stays at its highest point. 
um, for three days, and then it starts its descent from the highest point on the 24th of June of every single year, which in Canada we call it, we celebrate St. John the Baptist Day. And so also interesting with, this, with the correlation with religion as well and, and the connections with that. And th anyways, so at the highest point, we then start uh, having less daylight. And then so we go from Cancer into Leo, uh, into Virgo. And then uh, we have this, we have the fall or autumn equinox on the 22nd of uh, September of every single year. And also uh, where we have equal amount of day and night and where the sun is back on its equatorial path um, going from the fall. And then it will eventually go into the outer ring or the Tropic of Cap Capricorn. And I can show another visual for that. But anyway, it's another thing. And uh, equal amount of day and night. And then we start the, the fall. And then we start having shorter days and longer nights until we get to the winter solstice where the sun is at its lowest point at uh, 23.4 degrees north, sorry, south latitude. Uh, the 21st of December in the northern hemisphere of every single year, we have the winter solstice and where the sun is looks appears to set or it moves further away from us at its lowest point for three days. And then every single year on the 25th of December, uh, the sun rises from its lowest point and starts its ascent from death just like Jesus and Mithras and Dionysus and Horus and Apollonius and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All these figures throughout history, it's representing the travel path of the sun uh, through the through the zodiacal belt, right? Like the Maserat, Mazalot or the Maseroth or the Zodiac belt. The zodiacal belt. light. Yeah, exactly. And then and then we go back up uh, where we have like the shortest amount of day, uh, daylight and the longest nights. And then we go back from Capricorn into Aquarius, into Pisces, and then we start back the 20th of March of every single year where we go back into the spring equinox. And, uh, and I, and if I just wanted to show you that graph from Walter Russell, because I say that the luminaries, I say that possibly the, the sun and the moon, they could possibly be um, sonoluminescence or degassed elements uh, in different, anyway, this is an, an, another thing, but that they also, I think that they impact the atmosphere as well. And so that's, this is just something I was interested that, that you guys might be interested in rather and, and just get your take on the sun's travel path, it being some kind of a magnetic radiating luminary and the actual travel path of, uh, of Walter Russell's um, diagram. And some people could say, say the 20th of March, some people say the 21st. I think right. it has to do with the Northern or the Southern hemisphere. So that's why I say even with uh, the fall equinox, I, I would say the 22nd, but in the Southern hemisphere, they would, they would say the 23rd of September. And so I get where you're coming from totally. John, are you literally saying on the 21st or 22nd that it has equal day and equal night throughout the realm? No, uh, in the in the uh, in the northern hemisphere and and southern hemisphere like, like the, that we see, um, and and I can give you the example of uh, I can't okay. right now. How about okay, easy. just one of the hemispheres is no, it's not a hemisphere, it's not a sphere at all. In the north, no, that, that's right. But that's why in the, in, in the north is it got equal day and night? Is there one time in the year that it has equal day and night through the whole north? I don't know what you're asking or, me. Can I show you the track? Is it literal? Are, are you? I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Can I just can carry on? So the okay. sun, so hmm. in the Tropic of Ca Cancer, when it's there, it's no further than 23.4 degrees north latitude. So approximately 660 miles, right? This is measurable distances because the sun's travel path through the uh, zodiacal path also on a, on a daily basis. That that clock that uh, that Jeff has. So you could do it from uh, what we perceive as counterclockwise, right? But the actual luminaries travel from east to west and in east, like in that direction. And so we see it where we have Aries on the left-hand side. So, and we have Capricorn at the top and, and Cancer at the bottom and Libra at the, uh, at, the, at, the, at, the up, at the opposite end. I can show the, the, the clock if, uh, if Z gets back. But anyways, and so at six, between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., the sun travels through uh, Aries every single day. Uh, again, depending on... Uh, no, it does every single day between 6 and 8 a.m. And then Taurus from 8 to 10 p.m. Gemini from 10 to 12 p.m. Cancer from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., et cetera. And it, it forms a 24-hour clock. So it travels 15 degrees every single hour, two hours or, or 30 degrees through every zodiacal sign. Mm -mm. And so, so that is one. So every 15 degrees, the sun travel, travels one approximately 1,000 miles per hour. And so that's why they say that the circumference, the alleged circumference is 24,901 miles per hour. They're, it's the divine clock. They're just lying to us. It's actually, that's what's moving. Not us. We are stationary. Jeff, you are right. We are stationary. We are not moving. <laughs> and Dog, uh, can, I inter can I interject? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. So like if the sun is, so the sun circles above 
24 hours. We yes. all know that. The stars, the zodiac is circling above at almost the same rate as the sun, but just a tiny bit faster, at four minutes faster than the, than the sun. That's called a uh, sidereal day, 23 hours, 56 minutes, roughly. So that four minutes, the fact that the stars are four minutes faster than the sun, that equates to roughly one degree per day. So the sun is losing roughly one degree per day on the stars, which causes the sun to fall back through the zodiac every 30 days. 30 days is roughly 30 degrees. Each sign of the zodiac is 30 degrees. And, and so that's why that, we have 365 days instead of 360, like a 360 degree circle. It's not, yeah, it's not a perfect degree. It's, it's, yeah. we have five extra days. It's not, it, it would be exactly <laughs> one degree if it was 360. Oh yeah, and even in the zodiacal belt, so the sun, so it travels only within that belt, right? And so like I think it's like eight or, or nine degrees within even that belt, right? And so even beyond that, and and even with the constellation, like we're like we're talking about, or the uh, or the images in the sky, like you're saying with the luminaries, if we're plotting out constellations, like that also proves again that they're moving in 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 synchronicity above us, but not uh, on different paths. Like we're not spinning and rotating through the the cosmo or the universe. Mm -hmm. The Milky Way, it's impossible because, again, we have a, a divine clock above us that's traveling from east to west. And if you do the time lapse, like Jeff is saying as well, you can see it. Like you've got Polaris that doesn't move or it doesn't really friggin' move at all. Like it doesn't move. And then the time lapse shows a like perfect symmetry of these, the wandering stars and the luminaries in perfect circular path, right? And then when you map it out or you plot it out, amplitude and, and degrees or time, it's a, a sine wave. You're really and crushing that, the stereotype the blondes of blondes sound, right now. And sound, color, like musical <laughs> tones, they all create sine waves, right? So I think that this cosmos, like we have to look more. What creates them? Sine waves. No, what what creates sine waves? Amplitude and and degrees or time. But uh, like every, that's how we, that's how musical notes are created. Wave. This whole right. realm is a bunch of sine waves. Yeah, we're Man, born it's, into the sine wave. Yeah, it's, basi it's been like basically 20 years since I took calculus. That's what I think. <laughs> it's basically frequency, man. It's a yeah. sinusoidal oscillation, uh, exactly. harmonic. Come talk to me again, Dawn. It was great. It was a pleasure meeting you. Much love. Boy, she is a darling.